Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Braden's Deals. Thanks for holding on and continuing to subscribe and, and wait for videos. Uh, please subscribe, comment, and let me know what you think. But you already know by the title of this video, this Chrysler 200, Lemon. Has currently 30,596 kilometers on it and uh, a stack of paperwork from the dealership with all the problems it's had so let's get into it okay. okay so now for what you guys have all been waiting for I'm gonna go through this list here quickly so uh, the first thing that uh, hasn't been fixed yet is transmission shift issues uh, this was the first year, I believe, for the 9-speed auto. It's a 2015 Chrysler 200 with a Pentastar V6. Um, it has some shifting issues where if you're doing 40 kilometers an hour-ish, you give it a little bit of gas, it will uh, it'll kind of shudder. It kind of grab two gears at once, it feels like, and then take off. Uh, this issue's never been fixed despite numerous updates. Shift issue where you'll go to put it into drive and it'll pop itself into neutral and then back into drive. Um, feels like it's low in transmission fluid or something like that. Um, but it, they won't check the transmission fluid because there's no leaks. All they do is updates on it. Um, so that's only happened about three or four times, so I don't expect that issue just to get fixed like that. That's an intermittent thing. However, it is a known issue with these. It's been reported lots by lots of people. Um, so that's it for transmission issues. Let's get into the next biggest issue. The next biggest issue that this car has had and it's just recently been fixed um, it took well over 10 times to the dealership to get this fixed is a, a coolant leak issue um, they've replaced multiple hoses coolant reservoir cap thermostat housing has been replaced three times um, and what it ended up being was uh, a crossover pipe somewhere under the intake uh, that they had to replace and uh, it took 10 times just papered times that I have copies of here to get that fixed. Um, that was a huge hindrance and that was recently fixed just by going to a different dealership and getting different eyes on it and uh, getting that fixed. So that's been a huge issue that thankfully is fixed. However, there's many more that still aren't. Okay, now I'm gonna quickly go over the issues that have been fixed and are fairly minor. Uh, I'm gonna start with uh, Replacing the right front headlight. So the headlight had water in it um, after just one, uh, two visits to the dealership, they ordered it and replaced it. Um, so that was super easy and that was, that was convenient. That was one of the easiest things I've had to get fixed on this car. However, when they did that, they ripped the tabs on the bumper. I'll show you a picture of that now. So it's, it's little things like that that make me really not trust the dealers. Um, they ripped the tabs on the bumper cover when they went to remove it, and they literally electrical taped them back together. Um, and I wouldn't have found that out if they hadn't backed into my car several months later and had to have the bumper cover replaced by a professional body shop. Uh, they called me and, and told me like, look man, you should come down and take a look at this. Like, these tabs are taped on with electrical tape. Um, so that was pretty disappointing to say the very least and um, we'll get back into the damage report later of all the damage the dealerships have done to my car over the past year. Now that we're inside where it's a little bit warmer, let's, uh, con let's carry on the list here. Um, so the, the headlight replacement which uh, they damaged the bumper cover doing uh, and didn't tell me about and just tried to cover it up. Um, now next is a rattle in the left front. Uh, that was a uh, ended up being the left front strut it took uh, how many visits for that uh, three visits to have that fixed uh, and there's still a rattle on the front end that that hasn't been fixed um, and I believe it, it's the rack itself or it's the independent shaft that goes from the steering column down to the rack uh, I'll insert a clip right now of that issue Thank you. 
one of the very first issues I had with the car was the satellite radio. It would not pick up signal at all and it took three times into the dealership to have uh, that issue fixed. Uh, so they replaced the antenna for the satellite radio and uh, that fixed that so that's one thing that is fixed. One of the other first issues that I had with the car was the driver's side door panel uh, where the defrost vent comes out and it's level with the top of the door panel. Um, there was a gap that you could basically slide a penny into and uh, so they replaced that. However, when they replaced that, they uh, put a kink in the, in the door panel when they were pulling it off and they, it has a white crease there. I never brought that up to them. I didn't figure it was worth bringing up. Um, so that's one thing that uh, I'm just living with. Uh, also, I didn't know until I went to replace the uh, speakers in the front doors of the car that they had broken the door panel, literally, to get it apart, to get that vent out, and they just left it. Um, so it was up to me to re-glue it back together uh, with screws and washers and get it all cinched back up. Um, so very disappointed in that, that, you know, it's something you'd never know unless you went into it yourself. Another issue that was prominent last winter when I bought the car um, was that when the engine hasn't fully warmed up yet and, you, and you're stopped in drive or in reverse, uh, there's a, it has a very rough idle and you can feel it in the steering wheel and uh, that's not been fixed yet and uh, just looking on my list here, been into the dealership for that uh, two times only because uh, it was already springtime by the time the third time came around so I'll be bringing that up at my next uh, appointment. The easiest thing that I've had replaced on this car under warranty is the blower motor. It started chirping shortly after I bought the car only when it was cold. So one morning I started my car it was chirping I shut the fan right off I went straight into the dealership and I showed the service manager I turned it on it chirped he ordered it I came in the next day he replaced it. it it was the way every repair should be and uh, that was the easiest repair of the car ownership over the last year another one that uh, should be dealt with at the factory is uh, how you aim the headlights uh, I had to bring it in twice to have them aimed uh, when I first got the car it was brand new virtually and uh, one headlight was significantly lower than the other and uh, they were both too low so I had them even them out and bring them up and then I had to come back again to get them brought up even more uh, they were way out to lunch so uh, that's something that I should have never had to deal with that's just poor quality control however I'm thankful that that was dealt with now for another big one that's still not fixed is <laughs> issues once again you should never have with a with a modern vehicle is door alignment issues um, when you'd open the driver's side door it would drop down and it would catch the trim on the top of the rear door and it was ripping the trim and the weather stripping off of the doors. Um, I had it into the dealership. Let me look at my list here. Um, I had it into the shop three times for that. Two of those being body shops because they didn't want to deal with it in-house. Uh, and it is the door alignment issue is pretty well fixed. It's not perfect, but it's it's good enough that it's actually functional, not ripping off seals when you open the door. Uh, however, there, I'm still waiting on some trim to be replaced that they had to order um, that was damaged because of this door misalignment issue that should have never been there. Another uh, issue that has been fixed but took way longer than it should have to get fixed, uh, three times into the dealership for uh, screeching noise when you switch the vent from feet and defrost over to face or whatever. Um, I brought it into the dealership in Vernon was the very last time I went there uh, and they diagnosed it to be the motor. Uh, I then went to the other dealership um, f way further away from me because I quit going to the, Ver to, the, to the local dealership. They diagnosed it as the same issue and replaced the motor and they didn't validate that it was fixed. And uh, when I left there, it, uh, it wasn't fixed to say the least. And um, I would had to turn around halfway home and go back and all they had to do was lubricate up the linkage and it quit making that noise. So uh, that was a bit of a letdown because that was my first time having my car repaired at that dealership, the new dealership, 
and they didn't validate their repair. However, they did fix the coolant leak on that same visit, um, which was a huge issue from day one. Now let's go over the damage report. Um, as you guys know, I did upload one video when they had damaged my driver's side door, put a gouge in it, obviously opening it up into a hoist or something like that. And uh, that door had to get repainted at an at a estimate of about $600 and I was without my car for two days. Now a few months ago in October was the real big one. Uh, I had went to pick up my car and I always do a walk around when I drop the car off with the service advisor and uh, I always um, you know, let them know, hey, there's no damage, I expect to get it back in the same condition. Uh, and I'm like that because of they damaged my car before. So uh, I went to pick up my car and I did my walk around after they had, you know, looked at the coolant leak for the ninth time, probably eighth time, and uh, did an oil change. And uh, they had either driven it into a truck or a truck had backed into it or something in their lot and caused uh, $3,300 in damage. Um, I will insert a couple of pictures right here. Now the last few things that they damaged uh, were during the summer of 2017. Uh, the first one being uh, scratching the air box and breaking the clips on it. Um, they had just taken the air box out to get it the thermostat housing slid it on the concrete floor and scratched the top of it and uh, that's something i didn't bring up because i plan on doing a an aftermarket intake uh, so that's just something i'm going to live with and now on to my final couple of issues that have recently come up that they haven't had a chance to look at uh, one of them is a high-pitched whining noise upon cold start now this is only when it's really cold out however i have cold start videos from last year when i first bought the car and this is a new issue um, so that's something they're gonna have to look at. I'll insert a quick clip of it right now. Uh, I didn't get a very good clip, but you get the idea. So there's something up there. It sounds like maybe a belt tensioner or um, maybe something to do with the transmission pump, something like that. And uh, the final last issue that I have um, that I can think of right now, other than the things we're waiting for parts for, like the window trim, and things like that is I'm having an issue with my key fob uh, where sometimes it won't detect the key and uh, won't let me move and I'll have to shut the car off get out get back in in order for it to read the key so I've just been using my spare key um, however there's an issue with that key that's gonna have to be looked at uh, at the dealership on my next visit so in summary that's uh, approximately 17 visits to the dealership over the past 12 months um, and I was without my car for approximately 21 days uh, without my vehicle, uh, all because of warranty type issues. Um, so that's, you know, two thirds of a month out of 12 months um, where my car was in the shop um, due to whatever issue it was. Um, so in summary, should you buy a Chrysler 200? Uh, absolutely not. Um, there's a reason they quit making them and clearly it's because they're junk. Uh, secondly, uh, what do I do from here? Well, I think my only real option is to trade the vehicle in, uh, which I plan on doing in the next several months. And uh, I do want to finish with, you know, I do really like the car. Uh, it drives really nice for the most part. It does not handle very well. However, it's pretty quick and uh, gets pretty good mileage. Uh, especially being that it has nearly 300 horsepower and uh, also you know I'd like to state that a lot of the issues were because of the dealership however uh, most of them were just because it's a poorly built poorly designed car so yeah in summary I do really like the car I'd still buy a Chrysler product um, but it would definitely be a higher end product uh, you know some of these issues are just should never happen and you should never have to deal with these issues as a consumer and uh, I'm very disappointed to say the least now some of you might be thinking well what about lemon law uh, unfortunately I'm up in Canada there is no lemon law uh, you're shit out of luck if your car turns out to be a lemon which in my opinion this one is absolutely a lemon uh, let me know what you think if it is a lemon or not uh, please subscribe check out my channel I'll be uploading a lot more videos in the near future. And I want to thank you for hanging around. Um, so yeah, please let me know what you think and uh, have a good day.